I can't wait. I know everyone watching can't wait. So I want to remind all of you, you can pick up tickets for Wolverine and Deadpool. I love oh, that you've already changed the title. King. I know. I Your did outfit it wrong. was you. wrong. Let me Your outfit gave it away. Let me do that better. You I'm got... sorry. Let me I, do that better. Love it. Thanks Stop so it. much. Stop <laughs> it. Deadpool well, then we got Wolverine. it. We got Stop. it. This is your chance to be a hero among heroes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fandango Big Ticket Interview. I'm Jacqueline Coley, and I'm here with the cast and filmmakers. I'm so excited to talk to you, gentlemen. Hi, Jacqueline. Uh, Hugh, sir, I'm going to yes. start with you sure. because, listen, I saw Logan. Spoiler alert, you kind of died, <laughs> retired from the what? character. <laughs> I know. You should this see is it. how I find out? <laughs> I know. And I never thought I'd get to talk to you about this character in this way. But then I got the teaser trailer with this gentleman here where you just walked up the stairs and said, yeah, sure, Ryan, I'll do it. So I want to know the journey to get to that. Yeah, wow. sure. Because I heard it was maybe driving and thinking. A hundred percent. It was? I was okay. driving. <laughs> I was on my way. I was just driving and literally just like a bolt of lightning came this knowing deep in my gut that I wanted to do this film with Ryan for Deadpool and Wolverine to come back together. And uh, Jacqueline, I swear to you, when I said I was done, I really thought I was done. Um, but I, in the back of my head, ever since I saw Deadpool 1, I was like, those two characters together, mm, I yeah. knew it. I knew the fans wanted it. Ever since I'd put on the claws, people talked about these yeah. two. So, that had always been there, but I just knew, and I literally couldn't wait to arrive. As soon as I arrived, I rang Ryan. Yeah. Wow. And I just said, let's do it. Like, I hadn't rung my agent, no one. It was just <laughs> yeah. like, I'm oh, wow. Not, yeah. wow. I had to ring my agent and said, oh, by the way, <laughs> I've just committed to a movie. The year before, he stopped his car, called me and said, I think you should stop playing dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, just stop it. No, well. But it was just, it just came. And, it was, and, and sometimes in life, things come really clearly to you. Um, and when that happens, I've learned you just jump, you go for it. Oh, I'm so glad that you did, because I'm so glad to be here. And Ryan, maybe this is something you've been writing like vision boards about for a while, since yeah. like the first movie. Yeah. And now we're here, but more importantly, we're here with Disney and a hard R. It's like you had to cross so many hurdles to get to this yeah. moment, including that. I feel How like did Disney you... had to cross more hurdles. I mean, facts. <laughs> um. But talk about that and getting them to agree to this historic moment for the brand, really. I hope it doesn't sound condescending. I'm really proud of them for, for doing this. I think it's uh, a huge step for them. I mean, it, it, it adds a whole other color to this kaleidoscopic wheel that is that company and the different people that they, that they uh, uh, have been entertaining for forever. So I was, I was surprised, though, that they, that they let us, you know, go <laughs> as, you know. <laughs> Hard R, um, but uh, but uh, but very grateful. I mean, there's no other way to do it. I mean, you know, to, for uh, this character and this world, and particularly, you know, Logan being a, a, an R-rated film as well. I felt like that was the most kind of full-throated version of Wolverine or Logan that we've ever seen as well. So it really allowed us a lot of freedom, not not exploiting the R rating just to do R-rated stuff, but it really allowing us to kind of do um, anything and everything in a world where anything and everything is possible. All three of you are stepping into a bit of history with this, and it already has made history. It's like one of the biggest trailers at the Super Bowl. It's like our, one of our most anticipated. But Sean, you really are like the first man into space with <laughs> Disney and hard art. So how hard did you go? Because I know that you and Ryan probably, as both producers and, and shaping this story, um, how many Disney jokes are in it is really what I want to know. <laughs> well, I'll never tell. <laughs> Mostly because I, I, I do fear for my life. I, spoil, <laughs> I got a big mouth, and they can both beat me up. Um, but we were clear from the get-go. We said, well, if the three of us are gonna do this, we gotta be truthful to the tone of a Deadpool movie. Yeah. And that means we're not softening the edges, and we're gonna be audacious and funny and edgy the way I know I, as a fan, want from Logan and from Wade Wilson. And so if you're gonna put them together, and I have to say, every time Ryan and Hugh and I went in expecting pushback, uh, we got support from Kevin, from everyone at Disney, mm -hmm. they kind of have trusted us and allowed us to do the version of Deadpool and Wolverine that we feel is best. And I, like I said, we've only seen a little bit so far about the film, but everything everyone has seen, they're just so salivating for it. And this is not maybe the first time I'm seeing y'all in person, but I saw y'all all teamed up recently at another 
event. Um, let me just say it was inside a chief's uh, room, like like a like a chief's suite. It was your wife and maybe another lady that a lot of people are wondering might make an appearance in this. And I know you're going to lie to me right now and not tell me the truth, but I think we're going to go with avoidance more than dishonesty. <laughs> yeah, I don't the know. Avoidance? Straight up dishonesty is in the cards for us right now. But sure. how much of the Swifties been talking to you about Dazzler? Because I know they're in your mentions. Because like they were in just like ours on posting the trailer. Well, like I, I, it's a, you know m movies like this are. There's so many, there's so much speculation about so many people that might end up in, in the film, you know? I mean, I saw one that was convinced Elvis was in the movie, so, <laughs> you know, anything could, anything could happen, and, and that's sort of what I love about this universe and this world is, you know, we'll see. Surprises are the essence of Deadpool. Okay. Why don't we segue into your outfit and the color choices? <laughs> yeah, this color no, combination no, no, I find no. is very biased. I awesome. mean, incredibly I biased. Listen, listen. You're either I've... a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan <laughs> or, a, or obsessed with Wolverine. I mean, look, I've loved Deadpool since the very first time I saw him kill the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but me and Wolverine. It's go just back. a longer term wow. relationship. It's a longer term yeah. relationship. Don't leave them hanging. There yeah. it is. Sorry. Yeah. I'm so yeah. sorry, but I, I love you both. And look, I love the fact that you guys are bringing back old characters. We already got to see Pyro, and that was already something that folks were talking about from the trailer. I'm just gonna name a couple characters, and then y'all can like give me some face on it. Sure. Like, mm. is that camera gonna like zoom yeah, in yeah, and like, try and be bit. like a lie detector yeah, based yeah, on our right. expressions? Body okay. language experts. Yeah. It's like a game show. Mm. Electra. Mm. Nothing. Okay. I love Jen Garner, though. We worked God, with Jen Garner. God, what a sweet, Adam sweet Project. human. Yeah, she's been incredible. A Mystique. Mystique. Nothing. Nothing. The island? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm going to do this very last one for the black girls out there. Storm. Mm. Now. I'm going to answer with a different answer. We come to this movie, I definitely come to this movie as a fan. Yeah. A fan of the X-Men movies and the Deadpool movies. And so the movie was definitely made with the love of being a fan. I have okay. a pair of uh, uh, running shoes, they're uh, Asics running shoes that are, are the an uh, X-Men edition, but I have the Storm ones. Oh. Every time I put them on, it's a little salute to Halle Berry. Oh, mm. I love that. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, I feel like I've done myself proud since I cosplayed as Storm, like literally at age six, because we all, we all love <laughs> wow. Storm. Wow. Yeah, we, mm. we definitely love our Storm. Ryan, I love that this film is gonna be one of the big summer movies, and it's gonna be a theatrical movie. It's gonna get people out to the theater, and I know you're very committed to the theatrical experience. I mean, we're here at Fandango. Mm. I'd love for you to tell folks what it is about a Deadpool movie that seeing it in that communal atmosphere mm. is why they have to see it. I mean, it's, I will, as long as I, until I finally close my eyes to this weird and wacky world, I will never forget the first time I sat in a movie theater at, on, De for Deadpool 1, mm -hmm. with it just, a, it was just a fan screen, it was just, you know, all the folks that would normally go see this movie, it wasn't like a fancy premiere, we've never done that with Deadpool, we've always invited the fans in to, to watch it with us for the first time, and, uh, I, I've just, I've never experienced joy, elation, you know, a sense of community like that in a, in a movie theater ever. And it's an experience on like, it's, it's those kinds of experiences you wanna share with everyone else. You wanna feel that laughter and that warmth and the emotion in that room. And you know, I mean, I feel like Deadpool 1 was a bit of a curiosity. Deadpool 2 felt like a, a real proof of concept that there's something really, and then, you know, this one I think is the culmination of those, except we get to join forces with a legacy that is unlike anything else, which is Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, um, you know. 24 years, is mm -hmm. that what we're talking? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you talk about, you, look, these characters get, you change different actors sometimes for the character. This guy is never, you can't replace him. It's, wow. There's one, and one Wolverine and one and only. Yeah, but I'll jump in and say, there's also only one Deadpool. True. That's what and I will tell you, day is young. like, if yeah. audiences mm -hmm. feel one ounce of what I felt every day, which is, it's Wolverine and Deadpool, it's these guys as their most legendary, iconic characters at the top of their game and together, it's just audience delight. I felt it every day at work and hopefully that's the, what comes across on screen. I remember the, the first day that Hugh and I were in a scene together in the movie and we had, we had to sort of walk down this kind of road together and uh, we were standing side by side. I remember uh, a bunch of, I've never had this in my life, a bunch of crew members came up and one said that that was the best day of my life. <laughs> I mean. So you realize how much seeing those two guys together, seeing ketchup and mustard together up on the big screen <laughs> yeah. is means to people and it's um, it's something we don't take lightly at all, you know. So we're very careful when we're talking about in the movie certainly when we're talking about legacy of Wolverine. I mean we
get all over Deadpool's legs. <laughs> but we're very careful with that one and Wolverine how it relates yeah. to these characters. Oh. I have to say, remembering what you said about seeing Deadpool 1, our very good friend Tom Rothman, who was running Fox at the time, um, is now at Sony, but Tom said, make sure, Hugh, when this movie opens, you go to a cinema. Yeah. And I went to Times Square here mm -hmm. at 9 p.m. and I sat in the back. I sat, actually, it was packed, so I sat on the stairs. I had a, a baseball cap on. Mm. And I'm from Australia where in the cinema we're a little more, it's a little more subdued. Mm. I couldn't believe what was going on. The cheering, the yelling, the booing, the hissing, the comments. And so the idea that this summer these two characters mm. are going to come together, I, I, we will be hiding somewhere in some... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe not even oh, yeah. hiding. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. No, but that's, that's the yeah, great that's... joy is that magic that happens mm -hmm. when a few hundred strangers come together in the dark mm. and go through something together. Together, yeah. And it's also wish fulfillment for certainly for audience members, but it's wish fulfillment for me too. I mean, this is something I've wanted since the jump, since the get-go, and in Deadpool 2, uh, you know, I, th there's a, a coda that, where I, I say in the after credits that you're gonna hang up your claws one day, it's gonna make a lot of people very sad, but also your old pal Wade's gonna show up <laughs> one day and ask you to go on one more ride, and when he does, say yes. And I just love that this film actually makes good on that. And mm. you said yes. I also love the inspirations that you guys have already talked about that you have for this. Like when I heard that 48 hours, planes, trains, and automobiles were sort of like big inspirations. Talk about how much of a buddy sort of adventure this really is, Hugh, if you can. If you can preview a little bit of how this is more than the bromance. <laughs> we're, both like, we're, no, we're both literally, both of us are like, if you get Ryan, one, is, we're just Jesus. checking if it's yeah. okay. No, yeah, go. A little bit. I mean, you did say it is a buddy thing, and we know it's Deadpool and Wolverine, so we have to assume you're either in it together against each other, maybe a little found. Nope, wrong, it's wrong, not, wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it can't, just the word buddy doesn't encapsulate no. all there is. Mm -hmm. Because oh, wow. uh, that just implies good times with two guys having the best time together. Yeah, so yeah it is say, not that. No, it, no. Is, it is not that. But 48 yeah. hours, I literally, I was 10 minutes in to watching Deadpool 1 and I was at a screening that Ryan had set up for me, so it was before, and I had just made the announcement. We had not shot Logan, mm -hmm. but I'd made the announcement, this is it, this is the last one. And I remember being 10 minutes in, and all I kept seeing was Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy, yeah. and I was like, oh, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah. there, and then I just, I shoved that one down, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I mean, we're pretty. Is that well dodged? No, dodged no, no I think you did that. Well, I mean, I, well, we were, were very, very liberally borrowing from the, the, I think, the tones of some of the great buddy films ever made. I mean, if you think about Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, the first thing you think about is it's a very funny movie, it's a comedy, but it's also like a, a heartbreaking movie. I mean, yeah. it's a, mm. a performance by John Candy, Ugh. which is, I've had a lifelong obsession with that man, and that movie is proof in the pudding right there. I mean, it's so difficult to kind of execute those. Tones, and that's that's the sort of Empyrean heights with which we're kind of aspiring to here. Is that yeah, it's hysterical and completely unexpected at times, and we do some really really wild stuff in this film, but there's also an emotional core and a backbone to it that um, allows us and facilitates us to be able to do all those other fun things. Mm. I, I will have to say we wouldn't be here, obviously, without all of your hard work, but really, if we talk about Deadpool, it was the fans. From the leaked footage through the success of each film, mm -hmm. the fans have been with you. They've already said that this is their most anticipated movie of the year and of the summer. I would like you, if you could, to give a little tease of what fans are going to be most maybe surprised to see in this one. Just like a little, maybe a one-word adjective, maybe a, like a little idea that they may not expect when they said we're gonna get Deadpool and Wolverine together, but they're gonna be very happy that it's there. And I'll, I'll let either Sean, Ryan, any of y'all, Hugh, hmm. answer it. I don't know that I can do it in one word, okay, but I'll do, just to piggyback on what Ryan said, you know, Wade Wilson and Logan are built to not get along, right? From the comic books forward, these are two characters who are really constructed in a way that's gonna drive the other crazy, especially Logan would really, really find way to pain in the ass. But the relationship and this kind of journey goes places that are unexpected. So it's audacious, there's sick action for sure, but the relationship and that kind of, the way that that two-hander evolves, I think will be surprising to people. One thing that was important to us was to sh shoot this film in, in, in natural environments. And I think that also sort of 
uh, crosses over to our friendship, our collective, three of us, our collective friendship, how we interact with each other as well. Um, it's a kind of a bit of a, a no bullshit policy. We're trying to sort of always have that um, imbued in the aesthetic of the movie as well. And, and you know, in a world where it's, when you're on green screens and sound stages where anything is possible, um, it really allowed us to make a movie where necessity is the mother of invention mm. at all times. So you're always constantly writing, rewriting, changing, thinking in the moment, you know, um, pivoting, and it, and I, that's the thing I think I loved most about making this movie, especially under the Marvel Cinematic Universe banner. Well, that's what's great. crazy, right? Where now it's the first Deadpool and Wolverine movie as part of the MCU. But to Ryan's point, we've been friends for many years. So this wasn't, oh, go to work and make an MCU movie. This was go to work with your brothers and therefore feel loose enough to try stuff. And some of it sucked, right? Mm -hmm. But some of it. Which no one will ever see. Right, but the stuff that stumbled into maybe good and sometimes great, the fact that we were willing and comfortable making idiots of ourselves because we're yeah. friends offset, I think that allowed for some experimentation and some surprises mm -hmm. that make the movie better. Okay, I've been thinking about what to say. <laughs> uh, I was just buying you time. Yes. You know, I'm glad because there's a lot of things, a lot of fans are gonna be very happy. I, and I've spoken with fans around the world for 24 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel I have a connection and I always love talking to them and they're very honest. Have always been honest mm -hmm. and I've heard not great things about what I've done, <laughs> I've heard good things. There's gonna be a lot of happiness. But the thing I want to impress on the fans the most is from the moment I read the script that Ryan and Sean wrote, there was a love of Wolverine, like a taking care of Wolverine and also a desire to give runway to the character that we'd never had before, to express parts of him that we'd never been able to do before. And something about this dynamic of these two characters, you fans will see a different side. And I know from what they've told me that they're gonna be like, yes. Well, How's that? That, that was, was awesome. Perfect. Right. And thank the landing. you. Well, thank you all very much. <laughs> and I can't wait. I know everyone watching at home can't wait. So I'll remind all of you, you can pick up tickets for Deadpool and Wolverine at Fandango.